Hello everyone, and welcome to my 14th episode of my Lord of the Rings Divide and Conquer mod with um, Dwarves of Khazad Uh So this is a after recording voiceover because my uh, microphone just didn't want to record for the actual recording and then I had a massive problems with it because I tried to put it into Vegas Pro to um, get that to work and then didn't and stuff like that and now my computer is playing up for some reason why uh computer is playing up major time but it's still recording anyway so i'll keep going so yeah i skipped a couple of terms uh turns and we were attacked at latash um now this is a battle that i decided to fight out because there's no other way of doing it we would lose otherwise um however I was very unsure to see if I could win this battle. Um, now that I reflect on it, I know some things I could have done better, but I will let you see for yourself the fight, see how you guys think. Um, this part's quite long, if you looked at it carefully, it's about 37 minutes. Um, the reason why it's that long is some major things happened, uh, in fact, uh, a really crucial fight happened. So It was uh, quite intriguing. And quite interesting, actually. So we'll see how it goes. So, um, yeah, basically for my tactic for this battle is I piled my heaviest troops at the front. And my idea was, okay, well, I was like, what if I can, like, kind of follow them into this, like, area. And then my heaviest troops can, like, wear them down. And then I can use my other troops just to kind of grind them. And um, if you look carefully at their units, they're not like your standard bog goblin units or orc units. They're actually armored and guard type units. I don't think some of them were even orcs. I think some of them were humans. And um, so I decided to try just like, you know, um, putting some men on the walls, trying to defend them. If I could defeat them on the walls, then I could just hold them at the gate and that'd be it. Um, but you'll see. How, how, how it goes. There's not much to be said about the battle, um, but at the start they were not winning. Actually, here you'll see it. So if you look carefully, like they're heavy eye armor troops. They're like not just standard orcs. Um, and the dwarves I put up on the the ledges, they're not the best. They're kind of like your standard dwarves. But whenever you're fighting a siege and you're defending a siege, no matter if you're the AI or um, or yourself, you're going to either be taking a lot of losses or dealing out a ton of damage. So for example, even though I'm defending this, um, even if they were to win, half their army would be gone, guaranteed. Um, just because of, for one, the towers, they do a lot of damage, the bows slowly slog and kill them, and for two, you can just bog them down and they have to kill all your troops, so your troops pretty much fight to the death. So yeah, I was going to try and reinforce this uh, other side with some more troops. Um, as you can see, only one unit's fighting right now. Um, and they've got like two units of pikes and then a goblin infantry, I believe. And they're kind of just sending them in, trying... And this is where I pile in my troops. And as you can see, the bar is really against us. And I think at this point in the commentary I was pointing out, because I didn't try and record an audio commentary, it just didn't work. Um, I don't know what was going on. My microphone just would not record, which is a shame. And now uh, I can record again with it, but I have to record my voice on my headset for my commentary on Sony Vegas because it just won't let me record my editor keys. I don't know why. Computer problems. So this is a reason why you shouldn't bog your troops up at the gate. Um, well, for this circumstance anyway. And the reason why it didn't work uh, so far is because look at the amount of troops they're putting in. Look at the amount of troops, like, they're kind of funneling through that small gap. And, like, in this game, they kind of just jiggle around. And they're, they're, like, trying to force their way through a gap. And it's kind of just 
like hitting my troops like more and more wham bam bam and so like they're taking damages they're taking losses as well but we're taking a shit ton so as you can see like just uh carnage um up here like I decided to look at this area and like wow they've like completely cut off my troops here I didn't think it would be like that because like over here it's not the same or is the same but they're not doing as well um, and we're able to fight them back so as you can see now I think I'll hit the button in a minute to show you where their troops are they're kinda of starting to flank me a little bit this is where it's not going good and you look carefully they have these orc halberds they look so cool they've got like really nice um, really nice hammered units I, they look super cool um, it's kind of makes me a little bit jealous that fashion seems really cool I like it I like it I think it's super cool so right now we've lost 42 they've lost 34 if I read that correctly and we're just not doing too well um it was a fight that I said at the start I, I didn't know if I could win this fight but even if I didn't win this fight they're uh, units would be so crushed that they would have to Only half our force remains. Um, they would have to stay there they couldn't like move on um, and it it's good for me in a way because like even if I lose an army I'll gain some money back from like the lot like the less amount of troops that I have I can rebuild come back and take it again right now I'm not even focusing on this part of the map I'm focusing on uh, just conquering the lands of uh, the Vale of Anduin, I believe. The Valesmen. And you'll see a fight coming up with them. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this play out. Uh, as you can see, like, they're, they've lost half their men. So as you can hear there, that even though we've, like, lost most of our men, they have twice the amount of men we have. And they've lost half of them, so they've lost more men than us right now. So even though we're fighting to the death, we pretty much lost. Um, we did like fight them really well. We did well, like to kill most of them. If I was to do something different for this fight, I would have probably fought them at the um, flag, at the middle there. If I could have fought there, I could have funneled my troops. And like so they wouldn't be able to attack like in a straight line they would have to come in one unit at a time and we could slog them there that's where we would have we could have damaged them a lot more um, so that kind of sucks that's what I would have done differently but this I'm not gonna I wasn't gonna replay it and you know what happened happened um, so yeah like I think in the moment I'll speed up this because there's no point we'll see what I did I'm just trying to funnel them at the gate. I think that is their... That would be their ranged unit coming inside right now. Um, not too sure why it's so, so late. I guess they just didn't need them. Yeah, as you can see here, I'll take some chunks out of them. We're still fighting. The one thing about dwarves is they're very stubborn. <laughs> So even with morale wise, they'll fight for a while. Something changes in the course of battle, but defeat seems eighty-four percent lost. There we go. Such a bad loss, though, for my uh, general. I really don't like losing generals. Generals are so cool. If I had like five generals in an army, they would be so powerful. It'd be unbelievable. Generals can just take out units just because of their bodyguard. No, there was no chance for victory here. 62% of their men dead. 63% of their men dead. All these add up. So 37% left. Look carefully at the amount of men they put into this. Now, the men they lost. They lost more men than us. And I thought there was more. There's only 1,600. That's a shame. Oh well. So look, we lost Latash, 
Only 379 gold. It's not a big deal. And then the turn ends, and we move on. So we're hitting by the 10 minute mark now, so this is about 20 minutes in total. More. Or about 20, 27. I don't think I'll talk for all of it. Um, I'll leave part of the commentary just for you to watch and enjoy by yourself, but I'll talk through what I'm going to do. Um, I have nothing to say to you, so right now, if you look carefully, I'm reforming some troops at uh, Gundabad because I know that if an army attacks me there, I'm pretty screwed. Um, but it's one of those fortresses where you can just you can kind of defend real easily. Um, and I'm going to try and attack. Uh, yeah, I tried to attack Fenberg and I clicked the wrong order, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to load it back. It's like a stupid mistake, and it's like that I can afford to go back and reload because it's not that big a deal. It's not like anything would have been different because of it. So I did it. So in my case, I don't feel like I was cheating. Um, so yeah, I was going to go and take this fortress here. It's got about three turns till they surrender, and they've got a lot of troops. So, <laughs> why not? Fodrain actually gave me a lot of money. I didn't realize what, like, how much money you can gain from these um, small places. Like, some some of the places I have are like 300, 400. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I'm taking some more troops up. I've got a new general. I think someone came of age, I believe. And we're going to go along to Goblin Town. And we're just going to, you know, pick up some new troops. Mainly because, you know what? Now that I've lost an army there, I can build another army and go up north. Um, now, if you look carefully, uh, well, you would have seen very quickly, there is a general in this army. There's two generals. He is the faction leader, Bjorn, I think. And this is where we're going to go and take the fight to them. If I can take out their faction leader, they're going to be very <laughs> powerless. Because um, I don't think they have a general that's that high. No way they have a general that's high. This, however, is me actually sieging a place. And I do not like sieging. Um, the reason is you'll see in the upcoming battle. Anyway, I'll leave this to you. Um, at the end of the battle, you will see like a jump because um, the battle crashes right at the end and it doesn't go through so you'll see what happens like I'm, I made it right but it's uh, it's really annoying that's why I save the game before every battle and in case something like this happens it's it's really stupid I don't, I don't like it sometimes it happens before a battle sometimes it happens during a battle and sometimes for the first time there it happened after anyway I'll leave the rest of the video for you to watch the piece um, Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. I'll be back to bring you the next shadow piece as soon as I can. Right now, I've got a lot of uh, work to do, design work, um, interviews, and stuff. So I can't really be playing all the time. I hope you guys understand. And that is me. Yeah, basically signing off for now. Thank you for watching. Walls are no match for the valor and force of our arms. The ladders are now in place.
place. Walls are no match for the valor and force of our arms. Not be long before our enemy's defenses fall. Our siege towers are at the walls. Our enemy have nowhere to hide now. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. the time for brave hearts and brave deeds. the battle our soldiers have proved their worth today the enemy's walls belong to us now
our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. bloody. They have lost half their men.
control of the city. Only half our force remains.
our fearless warriors. Attack while his men mourn their loss. Control of the city. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. This is a clear victory. These people now kneel before the sire. Victory! An enemy to crush 